Hello everybody and welcome back to another Expert Python tutorial. So in today's video we are going to be talking about decorators which are a pretty cool and useful tool. They're not super complex but essentially they allow us to modify the behavior of a function without actually changing any of its code. Now this is useful because sometimes you want to be able to add and remove decorators while debugging a function or maybe you want to change the behavior of all of your functions and rather than going in and changing all of the code you could create a decorator which will allow you to simply you know, use one line of code to change the behavior of all of these different functions. So I'll show you how this works and what a decorator actually is to start by just going through a bit of a kind of recap of how Python passes objects around and why we can actually even use a decorator. A quick reminder before we get started that Kite is the sponsor of this series. Kite is the best AI autocomplete for Python on the market and you can get it for free in the link in the description. It integrates with the all the popular IDEs and text editors, so Subline, VS Code, Atom, Vim, you name it, chances are Kite is you know compatible with that. Again, you could download that from the link in the description. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called func. Now what I want to do is just show you that if this function takes a string, I can actually return another function in here that does something with this argument. And we've seen this before in the previous expert Python tutorials, but I want to just make this very clear on how this works. So I'm going to call this function a wrapper because it's inside of this function. It's not going to take anything as an argument. And what I'm simply going to do in here is say print started print string and print ended like that. I'm going to do a capital. And I guess actually this string, sorry, does not need to be in a string. It needs to be like that. So we print the variable. And then what I'm going to do here is simply return the wrapper function like that. So if I do this, now what happens if I say x equals func like that, and I put in my string, let's say hello, and I run this program, you can see we get started, hello, and ended. Now, the reason that happened is because we returned here the wrapper being called, right? These two brackets. But if I remove this and I do this now, nothing happens. So what we've actually done, if I print out the value of X, is you see we store a function in here that was returned from this function, which is actually equal to this. And then if we wanted to call this function, we could put our little braces like that. And here we go, we get started, hello and ended. So I just want to show you that this is possible. And the reason this is possible is because functions in Python are objects, which means that we can pass them around, we can throw them around our program. And you can see up here that this is the location of the object, you know, function wrapper from func.locals. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's bring it up a little notch and see what happens if we actually instead of just passing a string in here, pass another function. So I define a function, function, I'll call it func2 like that. And all we'll do in here is just print something, let's say I am func2, why not? I'll get rid of this. And now rather than passing a string in here, why don't we actually just call some function? So let's put f in here. Let's put, uh, I don't want func2, I just want f. Let's call whatever function is called. So we'll do print started, call whatever function was in here, and then print ended and then return this function. So let's see how this works. So now if I can move this down a bit, let's say x equals func func2. Let's print x and then let's call x. So what we're doing here for anyone that's confused is we've created this function which accepts a function as an argument, right, or as a parameter. Then what we do in here is we define a function that prints started, calls whatever function was passed in, prints ended and then returns this function. So this is not actually going to do anything until it is called. So when we return this, we'll store it in a variable x. And then when we want to use this interior function here, we call it with this, right, the x in the brackets. So let's have a look at how this works. Control B and you can see started, I am func2, ended, func, func, uh, wrapper locals, right. And the idea here is that I can do the same thing with say func3, right? If I print, let's say, I am func3 like that. Now rather than passing func2, I can pass func3 and we can see now we get the same thing happening except func3. And in fact, we could do it, you know, I could say y equals func, func2, and then we could do the same thing and just call y down here. And now both of them are gonna work and they're both gonna be different. So started, I am func3, started I am func2 ended. So with this in mind, we can start looking at kind of what a decorator is now 
almost, but I just want to show you a way that let's say, you know, this function right here, which we're going to call our decorator, we don't want to have to do this weird call, right? Where we use our decorator function to call function three. We just want to call function three and have it do this behavior and, you know, do whatever function three is, right? How would we get that to work? How would we get that to happen? Where rather than me having to call func and pass func three and call func and pass func two, how can we do this another way? Well, what I can actually do is kind of a cool sneaky line here in Python where I do this. I say func three is equal to func at func three. Now, this seems like a weird line of code, but essentially what this is going to allow us to do now is rather than having to call function and pass func three in, we can actually use func three, which is a variable now, which stores the function that is returned from the call of func with function three, which means that if we call func three like that, then what's going to happen is it's going to run this function that was created from this call. So this is a way that we can kind of change that behavior. We can say, okay, so func three, I always want this, whatever's inside this wrapper function to happen whenever I call it. So all I need to do to define that is write this line of code. And now every time I call func three from anywhere in my program, it'll do this. And if we run this, we can see that happens and that works fine. And we can do the same thing with func two. Um, yeah, func two equals func, func two. And then we'll call func two like that. And we can see that it works for both of them. So this is where we now get into the concept of a decorator. Things are going to get a little bit more complicated, but now all I'm going to show you is what a decorator does versus what we've done. So this kind of line of code here is weird, right? Like it's not something you really want to write. You don't really know where to put it. It's like just not ideal to have to write this line of code. So Python has thought of this for us and <clears throat> What they've introduced is a syntax that essentially allows us to do this um, just in a better way. And all it is is using this at sign and putting the name of your decorated function. So like that just on top. So now this line here pretty much just replaces this line like they are exact identical copy. They do the same thing. This just looks a little bit nicer and it's a little bit easier to understand what's happening when you have you know, there's a decorator syntax above the function and you can actually decorate your function with more than one decorator. If you want, we're not going to talk about that right now, uh, but that's something to note. So pretty much to replace these lines of code, all I have to do is put at the name of the function that I want to run before. Right. And then now if I do func three and func two, we can see we get the same thing. So we get started. I'm func three ended started. I'm func two ended. So this is how this works. So whenever you're creating a decorator function, you need to kind of implement this wrapper functionality where the first thing takes the function itself and the second function here, while well, this just takes the, um, or what is this? This creates the function that's going to be called when this is returned, right? Or when you actually call this function. So essentially you're changing your said func two is now going to be equal to whatever this is. And usually inside of here, you're going to use the function. Now there's a lot of problems that I'm sure some of you can think of here. So what happens if I say func two takes an argument X and instead of saying uh, I am func two, all it does is just print out X. What happens now? Well, if I run this and I even let's give an argument, let's give five here. You can see we're getting an error, right? And the reason we're getting an error, this huge error, what does it say? Wrapper takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. So the issue is that when we actually call func two, what we're actually going to be calling from this line of code is this wrapper function. So this wrapper function needs to have the same amount of arguments that function two has. So how can we do that? How can we fix that? Well, we could just put an X here like this, right? And then let's comment out func three. Let's run this. Uh, oh, sorry, my bad. We got to throw an X in here. That was what the issue was before. So we have our X's there and then this works, right? So I put an X in the wrapper. I put an X here, which means that when I call this X will be passed to this wrapper X and then we can use that to call the function and that's totally fine. But what happens now when I want to use func three and func three doesn't take any arguments, but this takes arguments. And the whole point of decorators is to be able to use this on multiple functions and we get missing one required positional argument X uh, func three. There's an issue, you know, things are happening. So what what do we do here? How do we fix this? Well, this is where we use what we call the unpack operator, I believe it's splat operator or something. But essentially, you can put star args star star quargs like this. And what this will allow you to do is accept any number 
of positional or keyword arguments. So essentially this says, okay, we don't know how many arguments are going to be coming in here. There could be an infinite amount. So rather than just trying to guess or figure it out or write a different wrapper function for every single amount, what we'll do is simply write star args, star star quarks, which tells us accept all of the arguments that are passed in, accept all of the keyword arguments. And what we can actually do is simply pass whatever these are to this function. So let's do this here, star star quarks. So now what's going to happen is any arguments passed in will just automatically pass to F same with quarks. And if there's none, we just won't pass anything. So this kind of handles any amount of arguments. And now we'll see that we, when we run this, we don't get any error and this works fine for any number of arguments. So even if I were to add, you know, X, Y in here, something like that. And then we call this with like five, six and run that still same thing. This is working. Doesn't matter how many arguments we have. We're perfectly fine. Okay. So that's good. But what happens when we return a value from function two? Well, what happens that? So let's say X equals print X. And right now, so we can see that we're returning Y from function two, right? But if I call this and I print X, we don't get Y returned to us. So how can we fix this, right? So what we actually need to do is since we're calling the actual function here inside of the wrapper, we need to store the return value. I'm going to store that as RV so that I can return it at the end of this wrapper function. So since this wrapper function is returned from here, this could return a value as well. And while we don't want to return immediately, so like I could just write the line return F like that, and that would work fine. But we want to do something after the function is called. So to you know solve this, we do RV and then we can return RV. So store the return value of this function, return it at the end. And now if I print this, you can see that we get our return value of six. So that is how we return values. That is how we pass in different amounts of parameters. And now I'm just going to show you a few actual useful um, decorator functions that you might want to use. So you're probably looking at me like, well, what's the point of this right now? Like, why do we have this? Well, a good example is say you want to validate input. Say you want to have a bunch of functions that accept some numeric input and that numeric input is always going to be between the value one and 10, right? Rather than checking the parameters every single time inside of your function, what you could do is you could use a decorator that checks them for you, right? And then all you would have to do every single time you want to validate that your input is correct is throw a decorator over top of your function that says validate input or whatever it's called write the appropriate code inside of a decorated function of these, these kind of functions like this, and then you're good to go. So that is kind of the idea behind decorators that you can modify the behavior of a function, add functionality to it without modifying the code. And sometimes you don't want to touch the code of a function because you want to make sure that you're not breaking anything. You don't know how it's been written, but you want to add something on top. For example, maybe timing how fast the function runs. And this is a very common example. I'll show you this as kind of our last example to using decorators. Um, so yeah, we'll do a timing one. So essentially, if I want to time how long a function takes to run every single time, right, then I can create a timer decorator. So you know what, actually, let's do it from the start. Let's erase all of this um, and do one from the beginning. So I'm going to say define timer, which is the name of my decorator. It's going to take in a function. We'll define a wrapper. This will take star args, uh, star star quarks like that. Again, quark stands for keyword arguments. What we're going to do here is start by importing time. We're going to say, uh, let's say start equals time dot time like that. And then we'll just print started or actually we could do something else. Let's do this. Let's say uh, RV equals func like that. And then let's say end or we'll ask, we'll say total equals time dot time minus start and then we'll print time like that and we can put total and then we will return RV and return wrapper like that. Oops, I did not mean for those. Okay, so now that we have that, let's create a function. Let's just say defined test and then here we're just going to say four underscore in range a thousand let's just say pass and there we go so now if i want to decorate this function i can say at timer and what this will allow me to do now is when i run this function have it tell me how long this took to run so let's go ahead and just actually call test like that 
and see it ran in 0, 0.0 seconds. So I guess this rounded for us, but I guess would I be able to do this, make it take any longer if I add any more zeros? There we go. So we can see that is how much time this function took to run. And if I wanted to add timer on another function, well, then I could do another one, say test two, like that. And we can even just say time dot sleep. Why is my capitals on two seconds? And we'll decorate this one with at timer as well. And now when we call test two, and we run this, give it a second, and we should see that this takes 2.001 seconds. So this is how decorators work. Again, useful when you want to modify the behavior of a function without actually touching it without changing it. You can add other decorators on top of an existing decorator. I had urge you to see, you know, how that actually works, how you'd be able to do that. You can test that out for yourself. But for now, that's pretty much it. And a really useful example of decorators is a timer decorator. When you're debugging, you want to check what is really slowing down or how long something's taking. Another good example is having a logging decorator. So having a decorator that essentially logs the calling of functions or what's happening in the program. That's a good one to add here. And then obviously validating input and checking return values and stuff like that is always a good example of when you might want to use a decorator. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below. And with that being said, I will see you in the next Expert Python tutorial series.